All right, guys, new auto detailing video. I'm gonna be showing you my new water filtration system for pressure washing. So this is all mounted. This is my rig. We have the foamers all down here and we have my garden hose. So I'm gonna show you real quick because Jerry came over, uh, he dismantled. We're gonna show you his kit on the bench. We're gonna show you how to fill one of the deionizing resin cartridges. You can see it here. So the water goes in. I have a Y right at the spigot goes down into here into a small hose. We go in and then we come out right through here and I have a quick disconnect right through my pressure washer. So let me just show you, he just rinsed off his car. So this is a black car that stays outside, it's not garaged. And with the amount of pollen that we get, you can see that the wheels and tires, they're not cleaned. You know, this is just the gener generic rinse down of the Volcano Black Stelvio Quadrifolio. You can see it. It looks pretty great. So Jerry says that this is making maintaining this car outside a hell of a lot easier. And we're going to just show you guys how you guys could do this yourself for about 200 bucks or less, depending on how crazy you guys want to get with the system. So let me just show you everything on the workbench right now. All right, guys. So this is Jerry's water deionizing filter system that he took off his wall to bring over here just so we could do the video for you guys today. So if you guys watch the channel, I did a couple of videos. I was using these inline carbon block RV water filters. Now they do help, but Jerry brought an interesting point up that if you look here, they only flow 0.5 gallons per minute and I have seven gallons per minute coming out of my spigot. So it's probably not gonna get enough dwell time, right? That's yeah. what you were saying? And your pressure washer is gonna be like two and a half gallons at least. Yeah. Like around there, so this is not adequate. So he that. came up with a system. Instead of using the longer cartridges, these are 10, by four and a half and they're dual. So they're filled with dual deionizing resin. All right, so you can see here, so we got two of the filter housings joined together with a union in the middle. We got the brackets, he adapted a PSI gauge and also a TDS meter, which is pretty cool. So you can see how he plumbed it in with these really cool fittings and a T. So this is depending on how crazy you wanna go, you could pretty much pick and choose these components at will. Now, just wanna let you guys know, this is a DIY video. So all of the components that are shown today will be linked in the description below. You could buy this stuff on Amazon. All of this stuff is for like under 200 bucks. And if you wanna add this here, you wanna add some of the stuff, it's gonna add up a little bit more. But the whole point is, you don't have to go spend five to 600 bucks on you know, these CR spotless systems. Cause you could use a handheld too, instead yeah, of plumbing in one of these things. Exactly, that's what I use. So we already did the TDS. Now we did a little test. We got, let's see if this thing turns on. So the TDS of my water coming out, oh, well, it's not accurate right now, but it was like 64 before. Oh, enough water in there. Yeah, it's probably not enough water. So it was about 64. And then after my filtration system, it goes down to about seven. Now you have the option to do different types of filters. Is this the carbon filter? Yeah, it's carbon, yeah. So this is a carbon block filter, similar to what I've showed on the channel before. So this is a larger version of this filter. It's gonna knock out the chlorine. Now, where I live, we have excessive amounts of chlorine. Chlorine affects your foam output. It also causes premature, immediate flash rust on brake rotors, you know, regular steel rotors, and also could be very corrosive depending on the surfactants you're using in your cleaners. This one here is a sediment filter. So you really have to decide what's going on with your water supply coming in and coming out. Do some testing if you also- That's you the could, nice thing with the dual setup because you can do resin in one. Exactly. You can, you can, you know, you can vary how you- That's what I did. So I wanted to do the carbon and knock out the chlorine because our chlorine level is way too high. Said you have the option to buy these you know, filters that are kind of as they come or you could buy a refillable cartridge like this. And you can see down there, it's got a little bit of a pre-filter. So Jerry, how does the water um, go through this? Explain this really quick. The water enters the housing on the outside. Okay, so in this blue, in exactly. this blue outer cavity. Flows up through the bottom and you can see it's like a pre, like a pre-filter in there. Okay. To keep the media in here. And then it exits out through the top, through this gasketed thing up into the filter. Okay, so it comes up outer. through here and it comes out, out through there. And then this little pad. Yeah, that's to keep the media and stuff at the top from like getting it's, an, it's another pre so you don't want anything to ever escape this system into your water. And there's all different medias you could buy. Now this is, um, what, what media did we choose on this one? This, this is, is just, a mixed bed, uh, color changing uh, resin. You can see it there, it's kind of like blue and gold. So we're gonna show you real quick how you're gonna fill this system up. And it, it's a little bit wet. I mean, is it okay to touch this with your hands? Yeah, it's fine. It's, 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 it's basically, it's just a resin and it's, it's always, it's shipped moist. You never want to let it dry out. Okay. This stuff will change, I think, into like a reddish color when it's expended. Okay. It's just super easy. You don't want to overpack these, but you want it firm because you don't want them to, you don't want the media to like tumble around in there either because then they can grind themselves up. And this is a really fine 
uh, resin. Yeah, too. it feels like it feels like wet play sand yes. when I was playing around with it. Now, years ago when I had to see our spotless, um, the media was totally different than this stuff. Um, it was a much larger granular size. And the reason I got ready to see our spotless is because it was just, I was going through the media and it was getting very, very expensive. And this was way before this stuff was even, you know, advertised on Amazon and eBay. You kind of had to go to a source and of course you're going to buy it from a main supplier and upcharge it. And it just got really, really expensive. So pack it, like it's best to shake it, almost like doing, when you're doing cement, you want to get the okay. compact it down pretty well. And then you want to have just enough so that this compresses in the top and still fits in this lid. Okay, so, so we have to put a little bit more yeah, in there. Yeah, it needs a little more. Okay. You don't want to overfill it either, because sometimes I think this, these resins can actually expand when they get really wet a little bit. Yeah, we're going to get this all set up. I'll show you uh, my setup again, and then we're going to pull my M3 out. We're going to do a, a touchless wash on the wheels and the body of the car, and we have a flow meter on my pressure washer. Now we're going to check to see how much water is being used to do a complete wash as far as my washes. I mean, I, I go pretty quickly because I have a very powerful uh, machine. I have a lot of GPMs coming in, a lot going out, a lot of PSI. Uh, I have a 230 volt professional electric pressure washer. So I want to see how much we're going to get and how much yield we're going to get us. Now, Jerry got how many, a uh, couple hundred gallons out of here right now, right? I got uh, 130 gallons to this system already. Okay. And it's still, my, there's water captured in here. So this is actually two in, two parts per two, million. Two out and I'm getting like around 59 Fi in. Yeah, so so his TDS is a little bit lower than mine, and we, we live pretty close by, but different water supplies. So, and that's it, and he's just gonna pack up. This almost looks like a facial cleansing sponge. It's like a polyester pad. Just yeah. Get that in there nice. Yeah, make sure, it's better off not having. And you want it to be snug, but not like overly tight. Yeah, it just locks in, it's, it doesn't yeah. screw on. Well, that's it. It's keyed in, and that's it. So now what I do, I use this petrogel, which is like a, like a silicone lubricant, and I usually put it on the little O-ring here, and also these housings have O-rings, and you have to lubricate them, otherwise you're never going to know when you're bottoming it out. Very similar to like when you're putting uh, an oil filter in a car. If you don't lubricate the rubber O-ring, you're never going to know if it's torqued down and you're going to get leaks, so FYI. So that's pretty much it. So you, you have the choice to buy filters already set up, whether sediment, carbon, or the deionizing resin, and there's an abundance of choices for this. And then you just load it how you want to do it into your housings. Then you can mount it on your wall, you can mount it to your pressure washer cart, you could do the TDS in and out. It really depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to show you real quick, I'll go over to mine. Uh, so you can see here, I have the flow meter is attached right here. That's going to check the flow going in, and we're going to monitor how much water we're going to use. I have a hose here with the quick connect. And then all I do here when I want to use it, and that's it. So now we're connected, and we're using a carbon filter, and then we have the deionizing resin that we just showed you on the table in this. This is a little bit of a different housing. I'm also going to put this uh, linked in the video as well. You can see it's one solid bracket. You have your air release buttons over here, so when you want to change the filter in the media, you're going to want to release the pressure so you don't make a mess, and then just unscrew these with those wrenches that we showed you on also the table. Remember. They always are almost always have a label of in and out because you want the flow to go in a specific direction. Yeah, so the top, the way these are molded, even though they're piggybacked together, um, you could see as the water goes through that they're molded specifically. So you want to change it. You know what I did, Jerry, on this? The way this was um, set up, I had to undo all the screws and I had to rotate it because I didn't want to have the water in coming over here and kinking the hose. Gotcha. So I rotated it and then I have my Gilmore Y and I got my valves right here. So it just if I want to use the garden hose, I switch it here. And if I want to use a pressure washer, I switch it right here. So we're going to get the M3 outside. We're going to do a wash, and uh, you guys can come along. We'll see how the car dries in the sun. All right, so we're going to foam up the wheels with the Auto Fanatic wheel cleaning foam. Okay, we're doing all four. Now everybody complains on how hard these wheels are to clean, and I'm going to show you. They're really not that hard when you have a real pressure washer. All right, cool. So now we're going to check the flow meter to see how much we pass through just to foam up all four wheels and tires. 7.5. So we use one gallon? Just a gallon. Okay, so we just use one gallon to, uh, to fully foam up the wheels. You can see it. It's coming off already. We're getting good self-cleaning action. 
with the airplanes. <laughs> All right, so with the turbo nozzle and a proper pressure washer, 2.6 gallons per minute, 2,000 PSI, you can clean these very difficult wheels without scrubbing them. one. You can see these wheels are pretty clean. 100% touchless because I maintain them. This is actually the second time I've cleaned them this week before the weekend. Said it's Friday. Let's get over. I might miss the spot rinsing right here. Boom, comes right off. So if you guys want to have much more efficiency, I, I can't even tell you, some of you guys that watch the channel, you spend thousands of dollars on equipment, but you don't spend the money on the most important part of a auto detailing rig, and that's your pressure washer. Also, Jerry, look, we're not getting any flash rust. Go down here. So whenever I use the RV Camco filters, the way I would indicate when I had to change it is when I would get immediate flash rust when I wash the rims. And there's no flash rust right now. So that's an indicator that this water is significantly better to do a, a full wash. It's a front wheel. Look how clean it is, right, Jerry? <laughs> no, it's clean. I mean, look at all the dirt. Look at all the brake dust. You see it in the in the foam? Get closer. That's it. That's just off the front wheel, and it's nasty. So I didn't have to get the wheel woolies or anything. So turbo nozzle, real pressure washer, 100% <laughs> touchless. Let's go see how much water we use on the rinse down. So we started off at 137. So we used four, four, roughly four gallons to foam the wheels and fully rinse down the wheels with the turbo nozzle. That was a pretty thorough rinse all the way around. So that's what we used four gallons. Now we're going to see what it takes to foam the whole car, which shouldn't be much. And then we're going to do a quick rinse down. All right, now we're going to foam up the car. And we still have, still have about a good 25% in there, right? Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, so I mean, when I foam the car, I mean, I, I could still keep going around and around. So we're gonna let that dwell. We're gonna do a rinse down, see how well it rinses. But yeah, the foam is a little, a little less dense, which is the change in the water. It's the only thing I've changed in my system so far. So see how many gallons you use with the foam? Yeah, we'll do that quick. So what do we got? We got eight gallons total? Yeah, so you figure by the time you're done, probably just over 10 or 12. Okay. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting all the crap off the car, which is what we wanted. But So I think we should put a valve, Jerry. Um, we should put a valve to just use it on the rinse down. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah, bypass.
we're still pretty good with uh, flash rust on the rotors. I do notice that the water is beating a lot more being filtered on the paint as far as the water, the way, the way it's hitting the paint and flying off. Yeah, I, I noticed the You notice that too, right? It's almost like it has 007 in it. Yeah, yeah, it actually seems like it's just reacting better with the protection that's on the car because it doesn't have the TDS and all that chlorine. So we're in direct sun. You can see, look at my hood. You know, the water's pulling right off and this will not spot. So you will have a spotless wash. If you want to go take the car on the highway, the only thing that'll happen, if you leave the car outside with the pollen, the pollen is going to leave marks wherever the water is standing because of you know, gravity. That's just what's going to happen. All right, now the magic question, how much water did I just use to do a full touchless wash on my car? Okay. Something like that. So what do we use, 20 gallons? No, like, like 14 gallons, For, basically. 14 gallons to do a complete wash? Yeah. Basically. That's actually not that bad, considering how, you know, how aggressive I am, you know, rinsing uh, more than once and foaming up the car more than once. All right, cool. So we're going to blow dry the car and wrap up the video. All right, guys, the wash is done on the M3. You can see the rotors are not all rusted out with flash rust. The car was easier to dry, and it seems that the water behavior and the beating behavior uh, is significantly better with the deionized water. So... If you guys are interested in doing this, all the links for all the products are going to be posted in the video description below. You guys can pick and choose. If you want to do one canister, you could do two. I just think, and Jerry made a good point, that by having two, it gives it more dwell time for the water to be purified before it gets out to your pressure washer. Also, we ended up with three parts per million TDS throughout the entire wash. It actually went down from when we took it out of the water hose. So as the water is going through, my filtration system through the 100 foot hose out the wand, we're getting three parts per million. So thanks for watching this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, post it below, or you can always contact me direct and you may see a piece together auto fanatic version of these systems on our website soon. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content. I'll see you guys in the next one.